What's up guys, Footberg here and welcome to another episode on the channel. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell so you get notified when a new video goes live. Today we're going to be doing a little in-depth look into the league SBCs. Uh, I put the video up last week of the 10 steps and it's been absolutely amazing. Um, just hit 2,000 views. Um, my subscribers are going up. It's just, this is really starting to take off for me. Uh, but I'm still getting a hell of a lot of questions about things that were actually addressed in the video. So I'm going to do a little breakdown on some of those things and uh, try and make it a little bit easier for you. And I'm going to list down some uh, main tips in the description so you can copy them straight from the description and uh, hopefully they will help you out. So guys, the first thing we're going to talk about is bronze packs. I'm getting a lot of questions on the previous video. How many do I open? How much should I spend? Don't ask that question. The answer is nothing to do with how much do I spend or how many do I open. The answer is over here and it's how many players in your club. I've got a little breakdown. So I'm going to write this down in the description as well. If you have zero to 3,000 players in your club, do BPM until you hit that 3,000 mark. Okay, that is important. Just try and get that 3,000 players. Do your BPM until you get to that. 3,000 to 5,000 players in your club. Um, you're going to grind the minor leagues. Um, and that's a case of the Saudi Chinese League, the Comnibor League. And also in between that, you can mix a bit of bronze packs as well. So you could say, go do the Saudi League and then do 20 minutes of bronze packs. Go and do the Chinese Super League, then 20 minutes of bronze packs. Just mix it up. Um, and then lastly, you've got the um, 5,000 plus players in the club. Uh, what you're going to look at is you're going to want to chip away at the big leagues. Um, so even if you go and do the Premier League, you get 10 of them teams done. Um, that's when it's when you're becoming self-sufficient then when you have that many players in your club. Um, because when you're getting the, say, 10 packs for doing 10 teams from the Prem, 10 teams from the Bundesliga, 10 teams from Serie A, I say 30 packs, you open them packs, you're going to get the majority of the cards back that you use to do them in the first place. So that's when it starts becoming self-sufficient. Um, so you're going to replenish your smaller leagues as well by doing the bigger leagues. It's just one big circle. Um, so you're going to start off with your smaller leagues, work your way up into your bigger leagues, and then the bigger leagues are going to start replenishing. So you've heard of that saying, look after the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves it's like this you look after your small bronze players you do your small small bronze leagues um, and then when you get to the big leagues they will look after you in terms of replenishing the um, players for your smaller uh, leagues and it's just basically going around like that now one other tip i have um, for bpm is um, the question about duplications what do I do when I get duplication from the bronze packs? Now, I've written down a little note. Uh, so if my eyes keep looking down, it's because I'm reading this. Um, if you get a duplicate from the um, leagues that you do, um, so say, you're, say, say you've got between zero and 3,000 players, you're doing BPM, um, you're grinding the Saudi, the Chinese, and the Commonwealth leagues. Say you pack an Al Falsi player uh, for 10,000 coins. You're thinking to yourself, do I sell it because it's 10,000 coins? Now, if you're on a low budget, you can sell it for 10,000 coins, put them 10,000 coins into funding more bronze packs because that's going to get you more players. So that's the greater good. But if you're in the position where you're starting to grind through doing, say, the Saudi League, the CSL, do you want to save that player then? Just put them on your transfer list and it saves you from spending 12k on that player when you next go around doing that particular league. So you can look at it in two ways. You can sell it to get them coins to fund more, or you can save it so you're saving having to spend those coins on the next time round. Um, I store basically all of them duplicates. Uh, so if I was to pack uh, like a Paderborn duplicate, for instance, I will always save that because I know how expensive it can be. Um, so yeah, that's simply um, how to do that. I will discard all duplicates from non-league SBCs. You can put them on the transfer list, but your transfer list space is going to be absolutely crucial when you get into this grind because 
you're opening so many packs, you're going to be selling so many things. So your transfer list spaces are really um, crucial. So I'll just discard them. And my rule of thumb is if I hit two duplicate players in three bronze packs in a row, that is time to start doing the bronze upgrade packs. So that's just a little rule of thumb. So two duplicates in three packs in a row, that's when you think to yourself, okay, I'm getting a lot of duplicates. Now it's time to start recycling um, and putting them into the bronze upgrade packs. That's only the non-league SBC leagues. You should know what they are now. They're in the description of the last video. Um, and then you can start doing the bronze uh, packs over again. You'll start packing all those non-league SBC bronzes again and you're starting to replenish your club to then do the upgrades again. So again, it's another massive cycle. Now I know it's a lot to take in. You might have to watch what I've said in the last two minutes. Uh, again, just to, just to get that you know, ingrained into your head, but I will write some notes down in the description for you. Um, so it's a little bit easier than having to stop and start pausing the video because I know that can be really annoying. But we're gonna jump over now to step. So on to step two, we're going to talk about the silver to gold upgrade packs and are they worth it? Now, in my personal opinion, I don't think they are. And I'll give you the reason why. Um, if you look at, say, the Sudamericana League, um, there are sections for Uruguay, Chile, Colombia, Argentina. Now, I will fill the brunt of these with um, silver cards. So I think the Colombian League, for instance, if we go and have a look at it just on um, on the screen, it'll just make it that little bit easier. I think I've got them in favourites. Uh, so Sudamericana, you've got uh, Uruguay, uh, 65 rated, Colombia, 68, Chile, 71, Argentina, 75. Now say, for instance, Colombia, what I will do, we're going to just do this quickly, is you require five Colombians and six rares. So what I'll do here is I will go to the Colombian League. Where is it? There we go, the Colombian League. And I will go, not position, quality, silver. And what I'll do is I will take six of these players, um, silver, rare Colombians, and I'll put them in and I'll make one side of the SBC. I'll get all strong chemistry on that side of the um, SBC and then on the other side I can just go and put in some non-league SBC bronzes that you're just going to pick up uh, through the grind. Now basically, you imagine I put those 11 uh, Columbia players into the silver to gold upgrade. That's um, 11 cards that are worth 248 coins at discard. Um, so if you times that by 11, that's 2,728 coins. On average, I want to say a um, common gold card is around 800 coins. So you're getting three of them back for your 11 silvers. So that's around 2,400 coins you're getting back. Now I know it's not set in stone. You might get a really expensive um, common gold card, but more or not, more often than not, it is they're very low value. So I find it a lot more um, beneficial to um, basically keep your silvers and just utilize them like this. Colombian silvers are completely useless. Um, Uruguay silvers are completely useless um, if they're from off leagues. But if you can utilize them in these SBCs and also in marquee matchups, you can use them in them as well. Uh, and they come in very handy. So for instance, this is how I would build it. I would normally go, uh, we go for a centre back, right back, uh, centre mid, and I pretty much should get away with all rears on this side of the uh, of the pitch. Uh, I don't think I'll have a right wing though. I do have a right wing, but I'll have a look if I've got a right midfielder that's rear. I do. Now straight away, there's five players. If I put a goalkeeper in as well. There we go. There's six players. So I've got my five Colombians and I've got my six rears. Now I've got five spaces here. I could just go and say five discard um, island league bronzes. And then you've got this section of the SBC completely done. And I find that a lot more uh, beneficial to use the silvers in that manner 
than to put them into the gold upgrade packs. So guys, the next little tip I want to talk to you about is loyalty. Now, I've built a squad here. Now, obviously, you just imagine that this is a team for one of the teams in the Chinese Super League. Now, I need six chemistry. Now, say, for instance, I go out and I, I can't buy the right back, okay? Because the right back for this team is, say, 10k. I don't want to spend 10k. So I go out, I buy myself a right midfielder, I put him at the back there, but look, I'm stuck on 94 chemistry. Now I know straight away what some of you will be saying is I can go over here and I can put a left mid, uh, left wing to left mid, bang, you're done. Um, which is um, which is true because that would put, give me the plus one. If you look in the uh, top left hand corner there, that would give me the plus one. But just say for instance, that's already a left midfielder. We're on the 94 chemistry. Now, if this uh, right midfielder here, he's not loyal. Whereas if I had a loyal right midfielder, I would have the 95 chemistry. So things like that is where loyalty comes into play. You can have a right back at centre back. If he's non-loyal, you get five. If he's loyal, you get six. You get right mids and left mids if you put them at full backs. If they're non-loyal, they get five. If they're loyal, they get six. So sometimes what it's best to do is if you're building, um, say, three, four, five leagues at a time, and you find a couple of teams where you need loyalty, build a team like I have, call it loyalty, and you can throw in a maximum of 14 players. It doesn't matter about chemistry, you're just throwing them in. If you're putting a striker in the goalkeeping spot, it doesn't matter. What you do when you get your 13 players, uh, 14 players, is you go over to squad battles, and what you will do is for the team of the week, and you will just select any difficulty. You will go into the game, you kick off, and what you will do is you'll make your three substitutions for the other three players that you want to get loyalty on, and then you'll restart the game, and then you quit. And then you do that 10 times, and you can do this on squad battles no matter how many times. Even if you play team of the week, you'll click on it and it'll say, uh, do you want to play this team of the week again? You will lose your first score. You can just do this 10 times. So I know this takes 10 to 15 minutes to do, but if you're doing this for um, a squad of 14 players across, say, four or five leagues, that can save you tens of thousands of coins for that 10 to 15 minutes of just going in and quitting a squad battle match, uh, which I've found really handy in the past. I've done it with Paderborn, um, where... It was a case of do I buy a centre back for I think it was 18k or do I go and get my um, right back um, loyal and put him at centre back to get that extra one chem point that I needed. It took me about 12 minutes and I've managed to save myself 18k. So in situations like that it can be very handy. It could be handy for you especially if you're grinding down and your coins aren't that high up. Things like that, them little glitches, the loyalty glitch can be really, really helpful. And um, hopefully you can put that to good use. So the third and final stage and thing I wanted to talk about to you is profit. I'm getting thing, people saying, but do you make profit from this? And the answer is yes and no. You have to factor in the price of the card that you get at the end. So at the minute, an 88 rated card is worth around 40K. So when you complete a league, you're getting that 40k back as a commodity in the 88 rated card. Now, this morning, um, I have completed the um, Sudamericana and the Libertadores League, and I have spent zero coins. And it's sim I have simply managed to do that from packing all of the cards from doing the other leagues. So when I do my Saudi leagues, when I do my Chinese Super League, the Prem, the Bundesliga, I am packing these players constantly. And when I run through these leagues and I'm opening about 100 packs, I can then go and do them two Comnable leagues and I'll pretty much have all the cards to do it. So there, I am getting an 88 rated card, I'm getting nine to 10 packs, and if I manage to do both of the leagues, that's two 88 rated cards and 19 to 20 packs. And then I'm getting more silvers, more golds, more bronzes. And then it just starts doing the process over and over again. Yes, sometimes you have to go out 
and it's tough. You have to buy things. If your car gets, a, if your car tire gets a puncture, what do you do? You go out and you buy a new tire. If you need a right back and it's costing 1,200 coins to get that team done, tough. You've got to buy that right back for 1,200 coins. But at the end of the day, you're speculating to accumulate. You know you're going to get the 88 rated cards. You know you're going to get packs, and you know you're going to pack these players over and over again to keep the grind going. Um, so basically, that's that. My club is so unbelievably stacked. I've got 27 different special teams. I have got all of those special teams through doing this grind. When a card comes out, like Jaden Sancho came out, I thought, I don't really want the card. I'm never going to use it, really. But I can have him for near enough free. Now you say, oh, you're not getting him for free. But I am. Because I do these league SBCs so often, I constantly turn profit. If you're lucky at the moment and you manage to hit a walkout, you're hitting a minimum of 20 to 25k with any walkout at the minute. So no matter what you do, you're going to make coins back. Some people could be luckier than others. Someone could be really lucky and hit a Messi as their main walkout. Another person might hit a Muller. Now, the person who's hit that Muller is still making a good bit of profit, but the person who's a bit more lucky and hits a Messi is making a hell of a lot more profit. So there is that luck element involved. But if you do it right and you get your club into a good sustainable position, then you will always turn a profit at the end of the day. Uh, hopefully this video has helped you a little bit. Hopefully I've covered some more points in depth for you. If you have got any more questions, just drop them in the comments below. I try to answer them as quickly as possible. But sometimes my phone doesn't get the YouTube notifications, which is really annoying. Um, but I will always try and get back to you as soon as possible. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. I know some of you still haven't subscribed. Hit the little bell notification so you know when the next video goes live. And I will see you in the next one.